Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. My name is Bliss Foster. I've been a fashion critic for a little over three years, and I just attended my first Paris Fashion Week. I wanted to give you all insight into the side of Paris Fashion Week that no one else shows you. There's a ton of content out there about this event, but almost no one seems to understand what it's actually like to work the week of shows. So while I take you through my week of attending events and interviewing designers, I also want to share a lot about how Paris Fashion Week actually works. We won't be dwelling much on the lifestyle element of this, and we won't be dwelling on the celebrity side of it. As always, we're here for clothing as art. Paris Fashion Week number one. Let's go. So firstly, the week of shows is not open to the public. In order to get in, you have to have a relationship with the PR companies that manage the brand's shows. Getting a week's worth of tickets to the huge name designers is very difficult. The events are attended by celebrities, and at a minimum, they have to keep the venues guarded for security purposes. It also, of course, adds to fashion's obsession with exclusivity. It's especially tough this season because the COVID laws for events dictated that seating had to be extremely limited. So many people that usually get into these shows were turned away this season. That left me, a brand new fashion critic who's independent, in a tough spot. So prior to going, I spent about two months leading up to these events on my computer trying to build connections with PRs and securing what tickets I could. There's definitely some surprises in here, but mostly this will be a roundup of upcoming and new designers to the Paris Fashion Week calendar. Before I started attending the events I had lined up, I wanted to check out a brand new Canadian designer named Cameron Ray Lazzotti. The brand is called Atelier Coin. He's with the independent designer platform Flying Solo, who were staging a combined show in a gorgeous location in Paris. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it's my first time in Paris Fashion Week, first big, big show. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm from uh, you know a small place in Sudbury, Ontario, so to be here is kind of crazy. And uh, all my stuff is handmade by me, one of one. I, I believe in uh, like quality over quantity, cool. and I believe in art Art and not clothing yeah. so I believe uh, it's everyone it's made for someone mm -hmm. and uh, so some people say oh you could sell it you could sell a thousand of it mm -hmm. but uh, you lose kind of the you lose the the magic of it all I, yeah. I love the one of one look the fact that no one else in the world has what you have uh, you know there's it's a niche market I understand but I believe that's the way fashion is going mm -hmm. and um, yeah if people can't see it you have to create the vision looking forward to it yeah thank you so much okay so going to Botter. This is the fitting day because the show is tomorrow. So we're going into the Palais de Tokyo and we're going to see what fittings look like. Okay, well that was the wrong building. We're going to go find the actual Palais de Tokyo now. Bonjour. Botter? Botter was a really special experience. The space was beautiful and they continuously reimagined the space to fit the needs of what they were doing. They started by unpacking this gorgeous collection while down the hall they were assembling the runway itself. They began doing model castings and the first fittings all at once. I got to attend their full fitting the day before the show, where they selected models, selected which looks went with who, styled each look, and did a rehearsal of the runway show itself. The process for this is at once improv and a strict adherence to the brand's vision. Runway shows, both big and small, are very chaotic before they begin, but throughout the process, the co-founders and creative directors, Roshimi and Lisi, were both calm and thoughtful the entire time. There is so much to see here, and the collection turned out to be absolutely beautiful, so I'm going to commit an entire episode to this collection later on, so more to come on this. Okay, so we just got out of Botter, and we're going to go over to CFCL, and they're doing more of a showroom setup, so it should be really casual and really fun. CFCL, which stands for Clothing for Contemporary Life, is a new brand that was launched last year by Yusuke Takahashi, an Issey Miyake alumni. He's very focused on sustainability. Much of the collection's materials are made from recycled water bottles. Yeah, this material is great. I mean, you would never guess. And he backs up all the sustainability claims by going into a lot of detail on his website. You can see the Issei influence in his designs, too. It's kind of a more Bauhaus ballet take on that genre. The clothes look really wild on the hangers, even the socks, which are just normal socks when you actually put them on. Okay, so we're going towards Dior, and the idea here is that there is always standing room. We're going to see if that is true or not. I think that with COVID regulations, they tend to be a little bit stricter with this kind of stuff right now. Like there's only, I think like maybe like 120 people that actually got into the show. There's some major buyers that weren't allowed to come, which they were uh, furious about. We're going to go up and uh, try to get some standing room. 
Most of these legacy French houses get the best possible real estate for their shows. Dior was showing at the Tuileries, Chanel always shows at the Grand Palais, Eve always shows outside the Eiffel Tower at the Trocadero. Much of the attempting to get in process wasn't filmed because that would have guaranteed not getting in, but I went back and forth between the journalist check-in site and the front entrance twice. I have to ride this carousel so I can give you bad news in a second. Okay, so nothing is working out today. I was going to get on that carousel to deliver the bad news that we were unsuccessful in getting into Dior, but then he kicked us off of the carousel. We didn't get into Dior. There was no extra standing room. It was only like ticketed and stuff. Tried super hard. I, I don't know. I don't know. This is just how it works. I have no idea. Saint Laurent is doing something kind of interesting because I uh, obviously didn't have an invite to this, but I heard it was kind of a like a half public show. And it is. They've uh, put it in the center of Paris. The Eiffel Tower is right there. And what they've done is they've managed to do a show that's semi-public where they allow people to look up at it. But there is definitely no mistaking that it's like you are not a part of this. It is distinctly separate. This is an interesting display of how fashion creates this air of exclusivity and separateness. It's kind of surprising they started on time. That's weird, right? No bliss. As I later found out, they all apparently always start on time. Yves Saint Laurent, the man, was extremely anal about always starting the shows on time, and they keep to that tradition to this day. The doors were closed and locked five minutes before 8 p.m., and then at 8 p.m. sharp, the show began. They're doing the, uh, the glittering on the Eiffel Tower, even though it's not on the hour right now. That's kind of unusual. They usually only do it on the hour. Flex. Watch me get copyright struck for including the glittery Eiffel Tower in the video. <laughs> oh, hi, I didn't see you there. My name is Bliss Foster. Welcome to Celebrity Sightings, where I won't recognize anybody. <laughs> Whoa, Liza Minnelli is here. Okay, Meryl Rogue time. Meryl was just nominated for the LVMH Prize for 2022. Yeah, I'm gonna go figure out uh, when this is actually starting. Meryl Rogue. Meryl Rogue. And oh. Meryl is under us. Bonjour. Meryl Rogue. Who are you looking for? Is it a... Uh... Meryl Rogue. Meryl Rogue? Meryl Rogue? I don't know. We're looking for Meryl Rogue. This is the kind of investigative journalism that you come to this channel for, folks. Meryl, hi. hi. So we ended up being about three hours early to Meryl Rogue, but that ended up working perfectly because we got to see them assembling the installation art that would be there that night and getting a lot of the models and the clothes and just the general presentation space ready to go, which we'll see in a moment. Okay, okay so now we're at Meryl and it's the right time now. Yes, of course. Meryl is one of the most exciting new designers at Paris Fashion Week. She worked at Marc Jacobs and Dries Van Noten for a number of years before starting her own brand. There's a huge amount of emphasis on textiles and unique pattern cutting. Welcome to our presentation. Thank you. Uh, this is the first time that we are officially on the Paris Fashion Week calendar. Mm -hmm. So we're super excited and uh, we are here at 3537 Orc, which is the future Dover Street Market. This is where we have the showroom and the presentation. Mm. And it's kind of a, like a take on a cocktail party because we're all happy to celebrate hopefully again yeah. and uh, so we have this installation created by our friend PZ so you have the mountains of glass uh, of, of, like empty wine glasses everywhere and these are filled with resin I these are filled with resin yes yeah. absolutely and I create this beautiful like landscape of <laughs> like uh, you know a kind of leftover dinner thing and this is like very Belgian food yeah. right someone said that to well, me earlier. they were <laughs> like oh this is that's PZ's interpretation of very Belgian food but Got yes it. there are okay. some fries on there okay and there are some rolls which is like a typical Belgian thing as well so in fact it is the big, the big thing that I always want to hear from you about is textiles can you show me yes. some of like the textiles you really absolutely. love in this one so we have this upcycled um, blanket, which is uh, turned into a scarf, mm -hmm. uh, which we also have as a coat. We always like to work with like really classic materials too, so this is like classic Shetland wool. Um, we have bum, 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 classic shirting, but like uh, deconstructed bow. You know, we kind of always like to work on like a deconstructed slip dress mm -hmm. uh, theme. So this season we have a few variations. And we also have it where the lace completely fell off the dress and we create this kind of like neck band. Yeah, piece. extremely Margiela on that one. I mean, he's the best, what yeah. can I say? Um, so then maybe we can go to the other rack? Yes, of course. Of course, please. I actually love this. She's so popular. This is what I want for her. This is so good. So we have the sport, uh, our take on a 
a soccer kind of oh, yeah. jersey, yeah, yeah. Uh, which also kind of comes back in the prints. It's kind of, I mean, it's still a subtle way of doing it. Mm -hmm. You have the M logo, but it's, uh, you know, it's barely visible, mm -hmm. which we like. Well, this is our double faced uh, cashmere um, sweater. So it's Shetland on the outside and it's cashmere on the inside for the comfort. Oh, wow. And we created this very cute little label for it mm -hmm. uh, to indicate that it's soft on the inside. And then what do we have? This is an off-the-shoulder uh, Shetland dress. Ah, and the rack is free. We should go on the other side. Let's do it. So this is our giant ruffle uh, cropped tuxedo shirt, which we love. And we also have it as a dress in pink and black. This is the um, double denim. You know, you can wear it with and without the, the, the waist piece. And this is like our sexy cashmere group, which nice. has like whole cutouts in different places. And here we have the, this is the, the combination dress. So it's a bustier dress with a corset inside. And it's kind of like our take on evening uh, red carpet wear, let's mm -hmm. say. Um, so it, it, you know, it's better worn than on the rack. And then we created uh, these like evening, evening kind of long, a sports jersey. We did a book this mm -hmm. season, which uh, we also made a video of. It's a limited edition of 30. This is the kind of our lookbook in a way. And it's a little bit uh, a take on Cindy Sherman's play of selves. Um, on, on what? Cindy Sherman's uh, play of selves. Oh, good. Uh, but in our own way and, uh, you know, but it's like about different people taking on different facets of their personality and uh, also about uh, different people interpreting the clothes in their own way. So uh, we have a very uh, kind of uh, a, a diverse casting in a way that we worked with uh, friends and family. When's the presentation? It is happening slowly now. Uh, so we already have uh, Abigail mm -hmm. out in the, the first look. Mm -hmm. And we have someone over there. So it's kind of the idea that it's, uh, this is a cocktail party and people and our friends and family are wearing the looks. Uh, cool. So it's kind of like, is it a look, is it not a look? Yeah, yeah. Kind of surreal Wonderful. little thing. I love everything about it. Walking out, there were these really cool cardboard cutouts of the collection as well. Walking up to Patu, this is a showroom appointment, which is in a lot of ways better because you actually get to see the clothes up close. In some cases, they let you try things on. Probably won't be doing a lot of that here. Patu is a really cool one because they're one of the older houses. They were really big in the 1920s and they're kind of going through a resurgence right now, which I really like that. There's like a lot of lineage for them to take inspiration from, but I don't know anything about the new collection. So uh, I don't know, let's go see. Can you tell me about the collection? Of course, it will be my pleasure. So this collection actually represents two different women. You have two different kinds of vibes, a more strong and confident and then a more sweet and tender. All the materials here are up to 80% recycled. So for example, the nylon and the satin is 100% recycled polyamide. I don't know how you say it in English. Yeah, Sorry. polyamide. polyamide. Yeah. Okay, great. And then you have wool, which is also organic, and the cotton that is goats. Mm. It's such an old house. Like, I mean, they were really huge in the 1920s, right? Yeah, Jean Patou has a huge heritage, and mm -hmm. we are so proud and lucky to, you know, continue the history. It stopped in the 80s. The mm -hmm. last creative director was Christian Lacroix, mm -hmm. which is a friend of the house. And yeah, we're super proud to, to, to relaunch the brand. It's very new, and we presented the first collection in September 2019, and, uh, and it's going in, in a cool direction, I think. What are some heritage things about the house, or is it, is it being completely refreshed? So for example, mm -hmm. in the little jacket here, mm -hmm. you could see the logo. Jean Patou actually is the first one who had displayed the logo. He was super famous for sportswear, mm -hmm. and for him, sportswear doesn't mean wear, a, you know, a sweatshirt and something mm -hmm. like that. It, also just meant what do you wear in weekends on weekends right. at the time women were like always super good dressed yeah yeah and actually he just gave them an option to something to wear during the weekend just so, something comfortable yeah and yeah. for us we take the same thing for us comfortable it doesn't mean sweatshirt it means a knitwear jumpsuit mm -hmm. that you can feel comfortable in and Jean Patou was he was very because he was at the same time as Chanel yeah, and so, it, yeah, yeah, and so he was the big competitor. Yeah, and they, I imagine that that was a very bold proposition back then of this this idea of comfort. Of course, of yeah. course. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Okay, so we're driving over to Dries. I don't have a ticket to get in, but um, Diane Pernay, who is a legend, is uh, going to meet up with us, and hopefully she's going to convince them to let us in. I don't think this is a show. That's actually one kind of interesting thing about this fashion week specifically is that there's a mixture of shows for like the really big brands but most brands are doing just a presentation of some kind so it's sort of a mix between a show and a showroom 
Um, so I think mostly this one is just going to be a showroom because it's open for a long time. There's like multiple days where you can book appointments. So uh, that's where we're going. Let's see what it looks like. And so today we are like really glad to welcome you to, to show you the, the women's collection and also our beauty line. The inspiration of the collection is Italia because Dries uh, is going to Italy really often. All the inspiration of Carlo Molino, the designer, the Italian designer, and his apartment in Turin. So you have a lot of references of its work on the, on the shape, on the spirit of the collection. We can film like here, but not upstairs. Not upstairs, yeah. understood. Okay, so here's the deal with this. Dries was upstairs, and so they asked us not to bring any recording equipment. And like I mentioned earlier, as an indie fashion critic, I am trying to respect the wishes of all of these fashion PRs so I can build a good relationship with them. It was really cool, though. I had a conversation with Dries about a specific jacket he was releasing from that collection that was a reference to a famous Charles James jacket. I told Dries that I had seen a couple of other designers reference that jacket before and what it was about that jacket that made it so special to them. He had such a cool answer. He said that this is kind of the designer's designer jacket and that many designers think of this as sort of a, a key part of their career to give their own interpretation of the thing, taking a stab at reinventing it. I also asked about the prints, saying that like he's known for these incredible prints and doing really wild print matching. And I said, it's so incredible because I never see you repeat prints. And then he was like, I repeat prints all the time. At which point I wanted to curl up into a ball and die. No, but he's a, he's a really cool guy. He's a sweet person. He said that when he does repeat prints, he typically blows them up or shrinks them down. And sometimes it's just as simple as a client bought a shirt 10 years ago. They really love the print on it and it's now worn out and they ask that he make the same shirt again. He also started a phrase fragrance line and I had the really unique experience of enjoying a fragrance. I'm really, really picky with those things and Dries knocked it out of the park. Apparently he hired 10 separate noses. A nose is an industry term for someone who designs a fragrance. So he hired 10 different noses and told them that he wanted to create floral scents, but he wanted them to be unlike any other floral scent that had been made prior. And it really worked. I thought it was really effective and they smelled great. Back to you, Bliss. And, uh, we're here at Cool TM, which is a brand that I'm not familiar with at all. This is kind of what it's about, right? Like going and finding new stuff. So we, let's go see. So first, I mean, your name, please. Uh, Thomas Thomas Monet. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the clothes in particular. What are what are some standout pieces from the collection that you really love? I work with that kind of plaids, with that kind of details. It reminds me of my grandma, just like grandma blankets. You know, she had this like on on her bed, and we work around like this kind of. Um, Tabs like uh, inspired from like um, Scottish and English um, um, fabrics. It's not around like uh, it's not about like garments. It's more about the fabrics. It's, uh, it's, it was the inspiration from the fabric supplier and that kind of tabs. And I put it like a lot, a lot, of, yeah, <laughs> a yeah. lot. <laughs> Yeah, this is like the stuff that I used like from the beginning. I know, like, yeah, because we, <laughs> yeah, I actually have like my keys <laughs> are course. exactly like that. Yeah, <laughs> earrings. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's too pretentious for me the the, the the fashion world, so I love to to have some funny way or just I don't. In French, we said like uh, pas se prendre au sérieux, not to be too serious. Mm. It's like it looks like a big like uh, garbage bag. <laughs> One side is like super shiny and the other side is like matte. With the same details as usual. Very cool. Oh, no pun intended. Very cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah, all the time. Yeah. Thank you so much. This yeah. is wonderful. Thank you very much for all the time. Thank you, DHL, for everything you do. Okay, so we are gonna go into this real quick, but check this out. So this is the kind of like stuff where I like cut my teeth on art interpretation, like classical art interpretations, especially like classical symbolism stuff. So they're, the entirety of that pillar is like a story, usually a story about conquering and uh, battles and killing people and stuff. But yeah, that was my shit like 10 years ago. I love stuff like that. And now going to a Casablanca Bulgari event, which is kind of crazy. That's a combo that I, I wouldn't have like guessed. Let's go see. The event was held at one of Bulgari's flagship stores, which is, of course, incredibly decadent. As soon as I got inside, I began looking for the founder and creative director of Casablanca, Sharaf Tajer, who apparently also knew the channel. That was super crazy. Yeah, yeah. On the floor. Yeah, on the floor. Yeah. You're the guy on the floor. Yeah. Can I can I get a few words from you yes, about the collection? Sure, yeah. Sure, sure. So now you're moving out of your of your living room. 
It's my parents' living room, but yeah. But now, now you're outside of the house. I know, it's so strange. It's I'm, the first time that we see you in different settings. I know, it's, it's stressing me out a lot. Yeah? yeah? Okay, you're out of your comfort zone. I That's am. good. Yeah. The guy, yeah. out of his comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. So tell me about uh, what you're doing with Bulgari. We're doing like a collaboration with Bulgari, which is quite crazy at the end of the day. Like, uh, I love like Bulgari since long time, so... I was surprised when they called me, but I did like, let's go. And we oh, they like, called you? Yeah, they contacted us. That feels us, good. Yeah. Feels great, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think like we very close to LVMH group and like since they have LVMH price, they've been like so helpful to me and all of that. So it's fantastic to do this thing with them. Like it's unexpected. Very cool. Yeah. What, um, I mean, for for the actual pieces here, yeah. what, what was the idea that you were going with? Like, what are you adding to the Bulgari legacy? I think like, the f- is the first time ever that we someone brings anything sporty into Bulgaria, mm. and like I think it was quite cool like to bring the world of tennis and all of that. So mm-hmm. I think it was mainly the thing that I wanted to do, but also paying homage to Rom uh, design and architecture, the classic side. And I feel like in a world where everything is like in deconstructivism and like break. I feel like I'm almost the only one that like going for continuation of classic burn in a way. It works. Yeah, I, I th- yeah, I hope it works. But also, I think it's important that like we're not trying to break everything all the time because then it will be nothing to break. Of course, yeah. 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 It's 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 much harder to find a good balance with what's already there rather than to just totally tear it down and replace it. I hope in 50 years, 60 years. One day, people are going to deconstruct my work as well. Mm-hmm. But I think now we have to create new classics. Mm. I think that's the thing, because everybody's kind of doing the same thing by like being against. And I feel like we have to be a bit more pro and uh, move forward into that direction, if that makes sense. It, it makes a lot of sense. That's wonderful. Very cool. Thank I love you so your jacket, much. too. This is you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so Good. much. Trust. See really you appreciate soon, you. Man. Yeah, Thank absolutely. you so much. Folks. There was honestly too much in this to include it all in a single video. So we will be back with more Paris Fashion Week coverage here very soon. This was a pretty landmark thing for the channel. I've not been able to go to a fashion week prior to this. And that literally is entirely thanks to, I could not do this without all of the likes and the views, the personal recommendations that you give to your friends, your professors, your parents, like everybody. But a huge, huge, massive thank you has to go out to the people that support this channel directly through Patreon. Those people are kicking me in some cases just a few bucks a month and in other cases a lot of money every month and this channel literally would not be possible if I did not have the kind of funding that's necessary to make this my full-time focus and to pay for a small business budget. So if you really love this content, if you want more in-depth coverage, I ask that you support the channel. It starts at just three bucks a month. It goes all the way up to as high as you want to give it. But seriously, it's you all that's making this happen and I I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Just thank you. Love you and I mean it. Bye-bye.